Our Byron Pitt sat down with five such voters from across the country. Let's take a listen to that conversation. Thank you all for being with us today. We're so grateful. Let's jump right in. One word or short phrase, can you summarize the issue or issues that are highest priority for you? I want to go first to Dr. Naz Muhammad from San Francisco. Uh, doctor, what say you? What's, give me a, a word or a phrase of what's most important to you. Um, LGBT issues, healthcare related issues, and immigration are the most important to me. Bobby Green Kilberg, what say you? Civility, respect for mm. the rule of law. Um, education, uh, globalism versus isolationism, but most importantly, respect for the rule of law. Mm. Ivanya White. Hey. Um, I would say words, education mm. um, is one that's very important to me, race relations, and then um, I would say just the overall uh what is the temperature of our country right now? Mm -hmm. I would say those are my biggest. Thank you. Rebecca Baker, what say you? What's your word? What are your issues? Women's rights, LGBTQ um, awareness, and preservation of democracy. Mm. Elliot Michael Jude Carter, what say you, sir? I think the biggest issues facing today is, for me personally, is economics in regards to inflation immigration or crisis at the border right now, as well as education or country as and unity. Mm. Part of what I hear all of you say is, is the importance of civility and, and, and calming the rhetoric. And we'll get to that in a second. This next question go, how do you feel about your choices for president? Are you satisfied from the presumptive nominees from the major parties? Bobby Green Kilberg, uh, hailing from Virginia, I'll start with you. Uh, I am presently a none of the above uh, voter. Uh, I'm a lifelong Republican. I served in senior positions in three Republican White Houses. In fact, I was the backstage green rooms manager for eight Republican national conventions. It's very distressing. And Donald Trump is a real conundrum for me. I supported his lower taxes, his deregulation, <clears throat> his selection of conservative judges, charter schools, strong support for Israel. Those are all traditional Republican positions, but I was very, dis very upset with his disrespect for the rule of law, his le lukewarm support of Ukraine and NATO, mm. his isolationist foreign policy, the travesty of the, of the assault on the Capitol on January 6th, yeah, yeah. his continuous denial of the 2020 elections, and going on and on and on. You look down at, at uh, Biden and he revitalized NATO and our other international alliances, but he's weak, he's inconsistent, mm -hmm. he does not seem competent. You know, Bobby, as you, as you spoke, I could see a number of, of your neighbors or other panelists nodding their heads in agreement. Uh, Vanya White of Charlotte, North Carolina. This next question, Ivanya of Charlotte, uh, my family's home state. Uh, question for you, what concerns you most about the candidates? Uh, what concerns me most about the candidates is that they are not representative of what our nation is. If mm. you look back in 2022, the median age of um, the population was 38 and a half years old. Our candidates are 78 years old and 80, our president is 81 years old. Rebecca Baker in Grand Haven, Michigan. You've been watching the convention, uh, and if so, has it swayed you to all what we're seeing uh, from uh, Milwaukee this past this week? Not really, not yet. I'm stunned mm -hmm. that these are the two best candidates that the country can come up with. I kind of agree with Bobby. I wrote in Mitt Romney in 2020, and I think that it's just so polarizing. The divisiveness and the extreme divisiveness is so apparent, and it's stunning to me that there are not even a sliver of sli similar issues that we can come together on. Mm. I think a lot of this is for show, and it'll be interesting to hear what Donald Trump has to say this evening, because what we've been hearing is he tossed his first speech out in favor of uh, unity and uniting the country and coming together and being a little bit softer on all of this vitriolic rhetoric that we've been hearing. I will be surprised if 
we don't see even some of that slip back in hmm. to his words, as that is what he is characteristically known for. He's a showman, and I don't believe that he is the best option for our country. Sure. And that, that change in tone, we've all been uh, told that that, in part, is because of what happened over the weekend in Pennsylvania, and we're certainly going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, Elliot Michael Jude Carter from Texas, what do you think? Has the convention had an impact on you? Or are you waiting for the DNC? A hundred percent. I think it has a big impact on me, honestly. Watching how Republicans are really uniting around Trump at the convention has, in my opinion, kind of brought a little bit more sensibility to it. Uh, before the convention, before the assassination attempt, I kind of wanted to see a little bit more of Trump to decide whether or not I was going to vote for him. I voted for him back in 2020. That was my first ever presidential election. And I think right now he's, he is the best choice for our country. Dr. Naz Mohammed, this, this question for you. Are you okay with the, my word, muscular nature of our politics right now? I get concerned when I hear them starting to dehumanize some people. Um, mm. And dehumanization is the first thing you need before you exercise violence on someone or take their rights away because you just disregard their humanity. Um, so yeah, the tone, and the language are really, really um, important. And Bobby, I want to start with you, but I want to hear from everybody on this question. The events in Pennsylvania over the weekend, the attempted assassination of former President Trump, um, how did that hit you when you first heard? And has it had any impact on how you see this race moving forward? Well, yes, I think it had a major impact on me. But the real question is, did it have an impact on Donald Trump? And I think it may have. I mean, if you remember, look, remember Saturday night when, not Saturday night, Monday when mm -hmm. he came out and went over to the box, he looked subdued. He actually looked kind of sad. Rebecca, what, what say you? Absolutely, it had a major impact. Number one, I was stunned at the... Uh, gross failure of the Secret Service to secure that building. And unfortunately, a young man is dead because of it. But I also feel like, I hope that Bobby is right. I hope that it did have uh, a come to Jesus moment, if you will, mm. for Donald Trump, because this is what it's coming to. As you watch President Biden now, are you concerned about his aging? Have calls for him to step down, including from within his own party, alter your opinion of him? Um, we're seeing him call people by the wrong name. We're seeing him, as Rebecca said, forget what he's saying, mm. mid-thought, um, rambling on and on. And if we were, if it was any other position in any other job, they would respectfully ask that person mm. to resign. So I think it's that we're at the point where he needs to respectfully be asked to resign, um, not for just himself, but for the, for the betterment of this country. To the point, if, leadership. thank you, ma'am. To the point, just a show of hands. Do you think Joe Biden should step aside? Show of hands, if you think he should. Wow, you all agree about that. And my last question, show of hands. If you are, despite our divided politics, despite who these candidates may be and your level of enthusiasm for them, are you still hopeful for America? Show of hands, if the answer is yes. Four out of five. So overall, we're still an optimistic nation. Thank you all so much. We are grateful for your time, grateful for your thoughtfulness, and we wish you and your families continued grace. And if we're fortunate enough, we will see you down the road before Election Day. Thank you.